Snowtail is a very unique game. It allows you to basically build the track the way you want it. You'll see all these pieces break apart. There is in the back of the book a list of different tracks that you can make. I highly recommend starting on a beginner track. This track here is called the Riddler. It is rather difficult um, and the game won't be much fun unless you're experienced enough to actually play it as it is rather difficult for the to get the sleds around the turns and obstacles about crashing them. You'll see this is a game for five players. You'll see this is your sled here that you control. This controls your dogs on the left. This controls your dogs on the right. And you'll, hand a, you'll have a hand of cards. As well as there's a break which you can change by playing cards out of your hand as well. The goal of the game is obviously to make it to the finish line, but it's actually not the person who makes it to the finish line first, but the person who manages to get past the finish line the furthest who will win the game. I'm now going to set up a nice little sample track so it'll be easy to understand the fundamentals of the game. This will play exactly the same as the normal game, just on a really short and simple track. Um, to start the game, is player in, play order is very important. So to start, to see who goes first or second or third, I just get each player to flip over the top card in the draw stack. Easiest way to do it. So red drew the highest no, color or number, so he will now choose where to start his sleigh. You'll see if you start in the inside lane, you're going to be going inside into the turn, so you're going to have more room to work with, so there's a bit of an advantage. But if you start in the fourth or fifth position, you'll see you'll receive one extra card for your first turn, or if you start in the fifth position, you'll receive two extra cards for your first turn, as it will be the hardest place to start, because you'll come into the turn with very little room to work with. So red chooses to go into the inside lane, and then blue has a two, yellow has a one, so then blue will go Next, blue chooses to go right in the middle, and yellow, feeling him priced to try to catch up, will take the risk of going into the fifth spot. So, red will now go first. So the card they flipped over just put it on the bottom of the draw stack. So, each player at the start of the turn will start with a sleigh with two threes for their dogs and a three for the brakes, so the sleigh will be going straight ahead. But you must pick up five cards, and this will be your hand of cards you can choose to play with. You'll see how you have a one, two, one, and a four, and a five. These cards, the cards you play must be the same. So you couldn't play a one and a two on your turn because those are not the same cards. You could choose to play the two ones, or just one, two, one, four, one, five in this case. So if you want your sleigh to be going just straight out ahead, you would only be able to play the ones, but your sleigh would actually be going nowhere because your break would, this is your break, it would be stronger than your forward progress of one plus one would be two if you played these two, minus three would be negative one, so you wouldn't go anywhere. So in this case, you probably want to take your highest card and play the five on to this side, so your sleigh will now pull to the weaker side because this, side's going to, this dog is going to be pulling harder than the three, so your sleigh will curve off to that side. So now you add these together, so you now have a speed of 8, minus 3, so you have a speed of 5 forward, and drifting 2 to the right. So you take your sleigh, and you got to go 5 forward and 2 to the right. So we'll go forward 1, 2, 3, and then our 4th and 5th moves will be the drift, and the drift. So we'll then end up there, and then pick up one more card. So, so you have 5 for next turn, and that is now your turn, and it would be blue player's turn who would do the same thing, pick up five cards, and so on. So once all the sleds are out, it would come back to whoever's in the furthest ahead on the track or inside lane. So if blue and red were here, blue is in the inside, so he would now be the first player, so he would then go first before red. But it would say blue is here and yellow is there, so now red is still the first player. So red's next turn, you'll see there's a speed limit of three going into this turn. For, each, for how fast you're going over the speed limit, you'll receive dent cards, which will limit the number of cards you can carry in your hand for the remainder of the game. So it's not a good idea to pick those up. So you'll see at the moment we are going speed of five. So we're gonna wanna slow our sled down 
so that it is only going a speed of three. So to do that, we can just play the three from our hand to match that. So now we have a balanced sled. The catch with a balanced sled is you have a bonus that's available to you. So if you're in first spot, you could then take a bonus of one forward, but in this case, we're going a speed of six minus three. We're going a speed of three forward. So if we took the bonus and we're going four forward, we'd be speeding. So we don't want to take the bonus, so we'll opt out not to take it. If you were in second or third spot, let's say you're in third spot and you have this same balance that you could take a bonus speed of three because that's the position that you're currently in. So we'll just do this. We played our card, we're all good. So we'll just be going forward one, two, three, and we got past the speed limit without a hitch. Let's say we didn't play the three and we were risking it and trying to get further ahead in the game and we chose to play, let's say, the four there instead. It's so now going forward a speed of nine minus three, so we're going forward a speed of six and one to the right. So then you take your sled and you would go forward one, two, three, four, five, and you still have not gone one to the right, so we'd end up actually crashing off the course. If this were to happen, you place your sled back on the spot it was before you crashed, and you'd pick up a dent card so that you would not pick up any more cards because you now have four cards in your hand for next turn. You continue to pick up dent cards if you crash off the track or exceed speed limits or crash into any obstacles like trees like you saw at the start of the, game, at the, start of the movie here. Um, crashing into another sled is not a penalty, however. So let's say yellow were to crash into red. Yellow would just sit behind red, but they were, their turn would stop and they wouldn't pick up any more cards for next turn, but they do not pick up a dent card. Another thing is you can actually choose to affect your break in which you take one of your cards in your hands and simply just put it on top of your discard pile which will be beside your draw stack and then you would swap out your three for a two break. And a reminder when you are drifting let's say we are drifting we're going forward three spots and two and one to the right we can choose to drift at the start or in the middle or in the end of our turn. You can choose when you drift, but you must perform all your drift moves as you are going forward at the same time. And the person who wins the game will be the... So let's say red passed the finish line the first, but then yellow actually comes and passes them further, and blue doesn't make it. Yellow is actually the winner because they made it furthest past the finishing line. If you are interested in this game, I would recommend definitely playing your first game on a very simple track like this. And don't make this, and then continue on going up. The page, these tracks go up, become harder in difficulty. Um, even if you played a few games and you're just kind of going through these ones, don't make the mistake I did and go to the hardest track on the game because it will be no fun for the people you're playing with, and usually not for yourself either, as it will become very, very difficult to control your sled because you'll end up with dent cards, and eventually you're going to be drawing two cards per turn, not giving very many options of ways to navigate the track. This snow pause piece is kind of just a funny addition to the game. If a player is taking too long on their turn, you can simply just give it to them to give them a reminder that you are taking way too long. As well, I received this bonus piece when I bought the game. So you can put this ahead of the finish line, like so. So you then have to be going a speed of five to actually clear this gap before getting to the finish. So now you understand the basics, we'll come back to the game I had set up at the start and I'll kind of go through each person's turn to see what they could do. So you'll see this is how the yellow's person's sled is currently set up, but they'll have to play out a card on this turn. So look at their five cards they have in their hand. And you must remember you can only plant down the same kind of card, so you can only plant down ones, threes, or fours. So in this case, there's also a speed limit coming up of four. And if we were to leave it how we were, how we we're going right now, we're going nine forward minus three, so we're going a speed of six. So you'd incur two damage cards for going two over the speed limit. So we'll have to slow down our sled. You don't want to slow it down too much that you're not going anywhere. You just want to find the right balance. So if these cards we currently have, we could play this three over top of our five, and that would be our turn. So that would then cause our sled to be going forward seven, minus three of our break. So we'd then be going forward four spots. And because this left dog is pulling faster than the right dog, we'll be drifting one to the right. 
So we'll go ahead one, two, three spots, and then our fourth one will be a drift to the right, so that would be Yellow's turn, and he is still safe, and he made it past the speed limit. Now we'll come over to the red player's turn. And you'll see the red player has already made it past the speed limit, but he now must bank, he now must drift hard to the left in order to avoid crashing off the course. So how he has it set up right now, he is going forward five spots and with a minus three, so he's actually going forward two spots. And since the drift is greater than the forward he's going, the speed he's going forward, he will not get all his drift. He would just move forward two spots and drift two to the left. But he must play a card, and since he has already occurred a damage card, he now only has four cards to choose from at the start of each turn. So you'll see he's got a five, a one, and a four. So in order to avoid hitting those that side of the course there, he could simply just put a five out over top of the four. So now he's going forward a speed of six, minus three. So he'll be going forward three spots and well, not four to the left because he's not going forward four spots, only going forward three. So he'll be going three forward and three to the left. So we would then move his sled forward one if a drift of, to the left, forward one if a drift to the left, and forward one if a drift to the left. So he would then end up there and he is now safe. Now the blue player who is in the lead is coming up to the whole bunch of trees. So he's gonna have to choose if he wants to come over into here or to here depending on what cards he has in his hand to play. So, if he were to play down a three or a two, just to replicate what he has here, he would then end up going five forward minus three, so he would only be going forward two spots, so he actually wouldn't even reach the trees, so he would be okay that way, but he probably wants to try to sneak into this gap here, so he would have to then go forward three spots and one to the right. And when you look at his cards, he doesn't really have any way of doing that at this point. He could, however, play a five there, which would make him going forward eight spots, minus three, so five spots without causing the crash. So he could also then play a five on top of his discard pile, which would then change his break to a five. So he would now be going forward eight spots, break of five, so only going forward three spots with a drift of two to the right. So three spots with a drift of two to the right, so he'd be going one, drift and forward, and drift and forward, so that would be his turn and he would end up there. If this blue player were to crash into a tree because it was the only cards he could play, let's say he were to crash into this tree, he would then remove it from the board, take one dent card, so he'd only be able to play, have four cards in his hand next turn, this tree would be removed from the board, and he could actually continue on his movement through the tree, but he has occurred a dent card in the process. Yeah.